I was 11, and my two buddies, Hass and Morgan, they were each 12, and it was summer, no school, and we sat on the grass in the sun behind my father's garage and smoked cigarettes. Shit. I was sitting under a tree. Morgan and Hass were sitting with their backs against the garage. What is it? We gotta get that son of a bitch. He's a disgrace in the neighborhood. Who? Oh. Samson. Yeah, too many freckles. He irritates me. That's not it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That son of a bitch claimed he fucked a girl under my house last week. It's a goddamn lie. Sure it is. He can't fuck. He can fucking lie. I got no use for liars. I don't like to hear that kind of bull from a guy with freckles. Well, maybe we ought to get him then. Why not? Let's do it. We walked down Smithson's driveway, and there he was playing handball against the garage door. Uh. <laughs> Hey, look who's playing with himself. Simpson caught the ball on a bounce and turned to us. Hi, fellas. We surrounded him. Fucked any girls under any houses lately? No. How come? Oh, I don't know. I don't believe you fucked anybody but yourself. I'm going to go inside now. My mother asked me to wash the dishes. Your mother has dishes up her pussy. <laughs> 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 we laughed. We moved in closer to Simpson. Suddenly I shot a hard right to his belly. He doubled over, holding his gut. He stayed that way for half a minute, then straightened up. My dad will be home any time. <laughs> yeah? Does your dad fuck little girls in their houses too? No. <laughs> <laughs> we laughed. Simpson didn't say anything. Look at those freckles! Each time he fucks a little girl under a house, he gets a new freckle! Simpson didn't say anything. He just began to look more and more frightened. I got a sister. How do I know you won't try to fuck my sister on this mouse? I'd never do that, Haas. You got my promise. Yeah? Yeah, I mean it. Well, here's one just so you don't. Haas shot a hard right to Simpson's belly. Simpson doubled over again. Haas reached down and grabbed a handful of dirt and shoved it down the neck of Simpson's shirt. Simpson straightened up. He had tears in his eyes. A sissy. Let me go, fellas, please. Go where? Want to hide under your mother's skirt? Will the dishes fall out of her pussy? You never fucked anybody. You don't even have a dick. You piss out of your ear. If I ever see you look at my sister, you're gonna get a beating so bad, you'll be just one big freckle. Just let me go, please. I felt like letting him go. Maybe he hadn't fucked anybody. Maybe he'd just been daydreaming. But I was the young leader, and I couldn't show any sympathy. You're coming with us, Susan. No! No, my ass. You're coming with us now. Merch! I walked around behind him and kicked him in the butt hard. He screamed. Ah! Shut up! Shut up or you'll get worse. Now, march! We walked him up the driveway and across the lawn and down my driveway and into my backyard. Now, stand straight. Hands at your side. We're gonna hold a kangaroo card. All those think this man is guilty of lying about fucking a little girl that in my house will now say guilty. Guilty! 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 Simpson, you're just guilty. The tears were really coming out of Simpson then. I didn't do anything! That's what you're guilty of! Lying! But you guys lie all the time! Not about fucking! That's what you lie about most! That's where I learned it from! Corporal, gag the prisoner. I am tired of his fucking lies. Yes, sir! Hass ran at the clothesline. He found a handkerchief and a dish towel. While we held Simpson, he jammed the handkerchief into his mouth and then tied the dish towel over his mouth. Simpson made some gagging sounds and changed colors. You think he can breathe? He can breathe through his nose. Yeah! What do we do now? The prisoner's guilty, isn't he? Yeah? Well, as judge, I sentence him to be hung by the neck. Until dead. Simpson made some sounds from beneath his gag. His eyes looked at us. I ran to the garage and got the rope. There was a length of it neatly coiled on a large spike on the garage wall. I had no idea why my father had the rope. He had never used it as far as I knew. Now it'd be put to use. I walked out with the rope. Simpson started to run. Hass was right behind him. 
He made a flying tackle and brought him to the ground. He spun Simpson over and began punching him in the face. I ran up and slammed Haas hard across the face with the end of the rope. He stopped punching. He looked up at me. You son of a bitch! I'll kick your goddamn ass! As the judge, my verdict was that this man would hang. So we'll be. Release the prisoner. You son of a bitch! I'll kick your goddamn ass good! First, we'll hang the prisoner. Then, you and I. Settle our differences. You damn right we will. The prisoner will now rise. Hass slid off of Simpson and rose to his feet. His nose was bloodied and it had stained the front of his shirt. It was very bright red, but Simpson seemed resigned. He was no longer sobbing, but the look in his face was terrified. Horrible to see. Give me a cigarette. Light it. Place the prisoner upon the porch. There was a back porch. Above the porch was an overhang. I flung the rope over a beam, then pulled the noose down in front of Simpson's face. I didn't want to go on with it any longer. I figured Simpson had suffered enough, but I was the leader, and I was going to have to fight Hass afterwards, and I couldn't show any weakness. Maybe we shouldn't. This man is guilty! Right! Let him hang! Look, he's pissed himself. Sure enough, there was a dark stain in the front of Simpson's pants, and it was spreading. No guts! I placed the noose over Simpson's head. I yanked on the rope and lifted Simpson up on his toes. Then I took the other end of the rope and tied it to a faucet on the side of the house. I knotted the rope tight and yelled, Let's get the fuck out of here! We looked at Simpson hanging there on tiptoe. He was spinning around ever so slightly and he looked dead already. I started running. Morgan and Hass ran with me. We ran up the drive and then Morgan split for his place and Hass split for his. I realized I had no place to go. As I thought, either you forgot about the fight or you didn't want it. I stood on the sidewalk for a minute or so. Then I ran back into the yard again. Simpson was still spinning, ever so slightly. We had forgotten to tie his hands. His hands were up trying to take the pressure off his neck, but his hands were slipping. I ran over to the faucet and untied the rope and let it go. Simpson hit the porch then tumbled forward onto the lawn. He was face down. I turned him over and untied the gag. He looked bad. He looked as if he might die. I leaned over him. Listen! You son of a bitch, don't die. I don't want to kill you, really. If you die, I'm sorry. But if you don't die, and if you tell anyone, your ass is dead for sure. You got that? Simpson didn't answer. He just looked at me. He looked terrible. His face was purple, and he had rope burns on his neck. I got up. I looked at him for a while. He didn't move. It looked bad. I felt faint, and I got myself together. I inhaled deeply and walked up the driveway. It was about four in the afternoon. I began walking. I walked down to the boulevard and then I kept walking. I had thoughts. I felt as if my life was over. Simpson had always been a loner. Probably lonely. He never mixed with us other guys. He was strange that way. Maybe that's what bothered us about him. Yet there was something nice about him anyhow. I felt as if I had done something very bad and yet, in another way, I didn't. Mostly, I just had this vacant feeling and it was centered in my stomach. I walked and I walked. I walked down to the highway and back. My shoes really hurt my feet. My parents always bought me cheap shoes. They looked good for maybe a week or so. Then the leather cracked and the nails started coming through the soles. I kept walking anyhow. When I got back to the driveway, it was almost evening. I walked slowly down the driveway and into the backyard. Simpson wasn't there. Maybe he was dead. Maybe he was somewhere else. I looked around. My father's face was framed in the screen door. Come in here. I walked up the porch steps and passed him. Your mother isn't home yet, and that's good. Go to the bedroom. I want to have a little talk with you. I walked into the bedroom and sat on the edge of the bed and looked down at my cheap shoes. My father was a big man, six feet two and one half. He had a big head and eyes that hung there under bushy eyebrows. His lips were thick and he had big ears. He was mean without even trying. Where you been? Walking. Walking. Why? I like to walk. Since when? Since today. There was a long silence. Then he spoke again. What happened in our backyard today? Is he dead? Who? I warned him not to talk. If he talked, then he's not dead. No, he's not dead. And his parents were going to call the police. I had to talk to them a long time in order to get them not to do that. If they had called the police, it would have killed your mother. Do you know that? I didn't answer. It would have killed your mother. Do you know that? I didn't answer. I had to pay them to be quiet. Plus, I'm going to have to pay the medical bills. I'm going to give you the beating of your life. I'm going to cure you. 
I'm not going to raise a son who is not fit for human society. He stood there in the doorway, not moving. I looked at those eyes underneath those eyebrows, at that big body. I want the police! I don't want you! Give me the police! He moved slowly towards me. The police don't understand people like you. I got up from the bed and doubled up my fist. Come on! I'll fight you! He was upon me in a rush. There was a blinding flash of light and a blow so hard that I really didn't feel it. I was on the floor. I got up. You better kill me, because when I get big enough, I'm gonna kill you! The next blow rolled me under the bed. It seemed like a good place to be. I looked up at the springs, and I'd never seen anything as friendly and wonderful as those springs up there. Then I laughed. <laughs> It was a panic laugh, but I laughed, <laughs> and I laughed, <laughs> because the thought came to me that maybe Simpson had fucked a little girl under my house. <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? You are surely the son of Satan. You are not my son. I saw his big hand reaching under the bed searching for me. When he came near, I grabbed it with both hands and beat it with all the strength I had. Ah! And the hand withdrew. I tasted wet flesh in my mouth and spit it out. Then I knew while Simpson was not dead, I might very well be dead very soon. All right. Now you've really asked for it, and by God, you're going to get it. I waited, and as I waited, all I could hear was strange sounds. I could hear birds. I could hear the sounds of autos driving by. I could even hear my heart pounding and my blood running through my body. I could hear my father breathing, and I moved myself exactly under the center of the bed and waited for the next thing.
I not only ran, but I also swam. And that's how I wound up here, away from it all. Away from narcotics, away from the outside influences, just me, my pride possession, and I. There are breaking points, times when I cry and think, am I a waste of life, a useless piece of shit? Am I heading anywhere? My head bubbles with these thoughts. I think I need help. Each day I die more and more, watching my life rush by me. My frustrations cause me to go silent and in solitude. When in a room full of people, I can't help myself. I try and hide in a dark corner. I'd rather be skipping right now in the open air without anything around me. Instead, I escape and walk alone, thinking of it all, worrying. What is my purpose? Is any of it real? Will I be casted in with all the other piles of uselessness? These unexplainable thoughts brings too much confusion. Then the worrying comes upon me stronger, and the same circle of thoughts rush through my head. I start convulsing, perspirating, shaking, manicking, headaching, fondling, panicking, stressing, bubbling, screaming, speaking, and worst of all, thinking. I force myself to calm down. So I look up at the clear sky, and for a brief moment of time, I feel it. My knees get weak, and I collapse. One afternoon I said to mummy, Who is this person in my tummy? He must be small and very thin, or how could he have gotten in? My mother said from where she sat, It's not nice to talk like that. It's true, I cried, I swear. And mummy, there is a person in my tummy. He talks to me at night in bed, always asking to be fed. Throughout the day he screams at me, demanding sugar buns for tea. He tells me it is not a sin to go and raid the biscuit tin. But really, I can't help it, mummy, not with this person in my tummy. You horrid child, my mother cried, admit it right away, you fly, you're simply trying to produce a serious sign excuse. You are greasy, guzzling brat, and that is why you're always fat. I tried once more, believe me, mummy, there is a person in my tummy. I've had enough, my mother said, you'd better get at once to bed. Just then a nicely timed event delivered me from punishment. Deep in my tummy something stirred and then an awful noise was heard. A snorting, grumbling, grunting sound that made my tummy jump around. My darling mother nearly died. My goodness, what was that? She cried. At once the tummy voice came through it, shouted, Hey there, listen you. I'm getting hungry. I want eats. I want lots of chocks and sweets. Get me half a pound of nuts. Look, snap your twist your guts. That's him, I cried. He's in my tummy. So now do you believe me, mummy? But mummy said nothing more, for she had fainted on the floor.